Okay. Good. Do you want me to start? Yes, yes, that's okay. okay. Right, let's start it. Um, okay, guys. We did not have a uh, lab yesterday. I was not in my office. So uh, we can have tomorrow from 5 to 6 as well. If you guys need to review. And next Wednesday, I will not be in my office. Next Wednesday, two to three. Yesterday, I was toward the end of the day. Uh, Nicholas caught me like five to ten to three o'clock. Next and Wednesday isn't tomorrow or we after the twenty. Yesterday, let's take care of yesterday first. Okay. Yesterday, I uh, was not there most of the time. Uh, he caught me toward the end of the lab. So tomorrow, so I'm in the lab. Tomorrow, which is Thursday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. So I supposed to be in the lab yesterday, right? Between two in the uh, office hour between two to three, I was not. So today, from five to six, I'm in the lab. Tomorrow, I am in the office two to three. Okay, tomorrow I'm in. Uh, again, next Monday I will not be here. Thank you. Next Monday I will not be here. Uh, from two to three. But again, your exam is this Thursday or no? You yes. Oh, uh, next Tuesday. So on Monday, I'm not in my office. Going to do that. Next Monday. If you guys have any question, any studies you have to do, do it this week. Next week, we are SOL. Is that what I'm being recorded? You all know what SOL stands for? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. So um, this is uh, somebody in the morning in the lab asked uh, about the life cycle of fasciola hepatica and Fasciolopsis buski. So let's go over that quickly. Uh, this is, uh, the, you know, some of the signs and symptoms of, um, of fasciola hepatica. And then, I guess, it shows Okay, right here. So what happens, this is the life, this is the life cycle of uh, fasciolo hepatica, the one in the liver, not the one in the intestine. You should know the location of these parasites. You're going to go to medical school, they might you bring you a patient that has these parasites. You should know something about it, okay? Um, uh, I'm, I'm just learning that, you know, it's a funny story, I'm being recorded, this is great, but uh, it is a funny story. In the United States, uh, I don't know how many years ago, and I don't know it's a norm now, they got rid of parasitology classes. Since nobody in the U.S. had parasites, they got rid of them. In microbiology, maybe one day they lecture in medical school. They lecture about parasites. Now, I've heard in UCSF, they have a full entire semester on parasites in medical school. UCSF medical school. They're talking about parasites for one entire semester. In veterinary school, on the other hand, in the United States, they do have one semester of parasitology, study of parasites. And now it seems like it. I, I have not checked all of medical school. I should ask my students from UC Davis former students here that they're in medical school at Davis, are they offering one semester of parasitology or not? But I don't know. I've got to ask them. Next time I'll see them. I ask them or when I send them an email, I ask them. But I know UCSF is having one semester of parasitology. So whatever we are whatever you're studying in here, it's gonna be, you're you're gonna see it again in medical school. And then if you go to veterinary school, of course you're going to see this. But anyhow, so make sure you know. I know some of you are uh, stuck on the question of classification. Yes, it is important to know the classification, the big picture. What is a clade? What is a grade? What is a phylum? All of that. Yes, it is. But I will not ask 10 or 15 questions from them. Just one or two during your exam or your quiz. You already have one question. I'm not going to ask anymore. Okay, but what I will ask a lot, I did ask in today's quiz, 
what are signs and symptoms, where is the adult parasite located, what is the name of your organism, these are the things that you need to focus on more. Okay, so sure, yeah, you should know classification. It is important, but you should know these things as well. But anyhow, and then we do have slide of amino lab. I mean, how much more uh, we should emphasize on these organisms. You have slide of cercaria in the lab. You have slide of metacercaria in the lab. You have uh, slide of radia in the lab. You have slide of sporosis in the lab. You have adult worm in the lab. What else can I ask? What else can you ask for? We have the whole life cycle in the lab. Okay, they are all microscopic. So let's go over. Uh, what happens in case of uh, fasciola hepatica? This is uh, fasciola hepatica. I hope it doesn't say anywhere in slide. Does it say anywhere in slide? Is fasciola hepatica, or is it fasciola? It should say fasciola hepatica. But anyhow, uh, this is the life cycle of fasciola hepatica. And what happens? Uh, usually, the uh, ruminant animals are the final host for it. And what happens when uh, we human eat liver of these animals, we can become infected with it. So what happens, these animals defecate in water, the egg, we do have it in the two by two slides, the egg of fasciola hepatica. Inside of the egg is one mercidium. Mercidia is plural. They come out, uh, they have cilia outside, they go inside of snail, and in the snail they become sporocyst. Inside of sporocyst you have radio. Inside of radio, you have cercaria. Cercaria eventually get out, and they cyst. They form a cyst. They lose the flagellum. They form a cyst on vegetation, right here. And then a cow or a sheep comes and eat those vegetation, or maybe human, uh, based on this diagram, uh, eat the vegetation, and we become infected with it. We defecate in water. The life cycle goes on and on and on. We also can eat, become infected. Uh, the textbook does not, this diagram does not say it, by eating liver of these animals raw, we become infected with it because in, uh, they have the adult worm, uh, so, but anyhow, they can become, we can become infected. The other one is uh, Fasilopsis buski, and look at the name. So most, 99% of the things, 90%, put it this way, of the things that I want you to know, I put it in PowerPoint, right here. It is called intestinal fluke, human small intestinal fluke. So uh, this is uh, Fasilopsis buski. Uh, you're getting it by eating uh, aquatic vegetation, pathology, inflammation, malabsorption of nutrients, diarrhea, and even death in heavy infections. So people can die off of a heavy infection. Here it is. So pigs and humans defecate in water, out of water comes out, uh, they go into the snail, the mercidium, find the snail, and then you have the same thing, sporocyst, iridium, and finally, uh, cercaria. Cercaria has one flagellum, sits on vegetation, and become metacercaria, and then we human eat the vegetation, become infected, and then uh, we have the adult worms, is inside of us, the adult worm, is inside of us or pigs, and we defecate in the water, the pig, uh, the eggs, and the cycle goes on and on and on and again. Here it is, a picture I'm showing you. Uh, people usually uh, take these vegetations and eat them, but again, uh, as I mentioned, uh, in, the, and, and the, in the water, in this water, there are the snail, the proper snail, not any snail, the snail, that can carry on the life cycle of this parasite, uh, Fasilopsis buski, and then uh, from the snail comes, they sit on the vegetation, and these people who do not cook the vegetation, and they do not wash it properly, they just eat it, uh, or they might just wash it, rinse it a little bit, but they do not uh, eat it. Look at the lab, in the lab, look at Metacercaria. Of course, we have Metacercaria of uh, fasciola, uh, fasciola hepatic in the lab. That's what we have. We do not have metacercaria in the lab of Fasciolopsis buski. Very small, microscopic, on vegetation. It sits on vegetation and people, we eat those vegetation and we become infected. I hope I'm making some sense. Does the life cycle make sense? Some of the life cycle coming up 
are going to become a little bit more involved. And that's what I said at the beginning of these. Imagine these parasites, these Facilopsis buski, Facila, uh, Facilopsis, uh, Facilopsis buski, and Faciola hepatica. Imagine what they have to go through. They have to go, when they get out of human, they have to go to the snail. If human defecate in an outhouse, in a toilet somewhere, this is the end of life cycle. Is that right? But when human defecate in water, right, they come out of the egg, the myrosidium, find the snail, you get rid of the snail, you get rid of this parasite, right? They find the snail, and then from the snail, they have to come out and sit on a vegetation somewhere. If there is no vegetation around, then life cycle is finished. And then on top of that, when they sit on vegetation, they should sit down there and hope a human come and eat them. I hope I'm making some sense. What they have, that's why, that's why one egg becomes many, 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 many metacercaria, larva. One egg becomes many, 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 many cercaria. And that's not true in the rest of animal kingdom. The rest of animal kingdom, one egg becomes one adult organism, or one larva. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. I, 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 I made, um, the next organism is uh, Clenorchis sinensis, human liver fluke. This is called human liver fluke. The other one is the ruminant liver fluke, Fasciola hepatica. This is human liver fluke. And what happens, the adult parasites resides in the bile duct at the beginning of semester. Is that right? We talked about bile ducts, common bile ducts, hepatic ducts, all of those bile ducts, so you know what it is. The first exam material, that's why I emphasized on it, because for today, you should know where that is in human. So the adult worms reside right here. They are very small. Look at them, look at them in the lab. They are microscopic. Don't look at these models. These models, this is the model, if you would, this is the model of um, Clonorchis sinensis. Okay, huge model, but look at them in the lab on the microscope. Those are real uh, organisms. So, they release the egg in the feces. So the egg comes find the snail. You have the normal, usual sporocyst, redia, cercaria. Cercaria swims and find the fish. So, so far, you need one well, one, two, three hosts. I hope I'm making some sense. And then these organisms have to hope human eat them. Fish eat fish, and then we human become infected, and the life cycle will go on. And then they have to hope we do not cook that fish. We eat it raw or pickling. What happens, they call, uh, this is very common in far eastern country, like uh, rural area of China, Japan, to some extent Japan, uh, Japanese were able to um, control this. Uh, Korea, uh, Vietnam, those countries have problem with this in the rural area, not in the city. They have problem with this because people pick up their fish, as you know, they pickle their fish, pickling does not kill this metacercaria in the meat. This is the meat. This is the metacercaria. Pickling does not kill it. So what happens, eat, people eat it, and then they become infected. Or sushi, people who eat, like to eat sushi, the raw meat. But, uh, but if you cook it, if you fry it, cook it, it will kill the metacercaria. Uh, you, you, you cut the life cycle. I hope I'm making some sense. And of course, human has to defecate in body of water. This is, again, this, the snail is aquatic snail. People have to defecate in body of water, and the snail has to be there, and out of the snail comes cercaria, cercaria penetrates fish, and in the fish you have metacercaria, and we have to eat fish raw, then we become infected. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay. What was the scientific name for that? Clonorchis sinensis. Didn't I? Uh, it's, 
And this, I did not put it in there. Clonorchis sinensis. What this diagram should be in your text. That's the next, next slide. Okay. Give two, give two reasons why tegument is beneficial in, uh, to platy element these, which I gave it to you in the lab. I'm hoping you find out the answer when I put these questions up. I'm hoping you find out the answer. One of them, they evade our immune system by changing their protein uh, code on the, uh, on the tegument. And the other one, they evade our uh, digestive enzymes. You know, digestive enzymes can kill them as well, but they evade those. Here it is, chronorchia sinensis. Uh, Metacercaria in meat, oral sucker, and ventral sucker, human liver fluke, they call this human liver fluke. Okay, as far as the model goes, you guys, here is uh, the model of this organism. Most of these things, is it in there? No. I should bring it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up. Okay. That's okay. Uh, so, uh, right here you have oral sucker and ventral sucker. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to see, but oral sucker, ventral sucker. Did they, did, sorry. Here so, oral sucker, ventral sucker, and then you have this um, uh, pharynx, esophagus, all of that goodies are there. And they call this cecum, uh, intestinal cecum. All of these, the brown area right here, are testes. And then you have the, on the slides you will not see this, the excretory, the green, excretory bladder, uh, the cecum comes all the way to the end. They do not have anus, the mouth and anus is right here, oral sucker and ventral sucker. On the sides you have the, uh, the um, yolk gland or vitellarian gland. And then uh, you have the testes on the bottom. Did they say these are testes? Sorry, the brown. The brown is the ovary, uh, it's uterus, sorry, yes, thank you. It's uterus, and these are testes, okay? And then um, ovary is the red right here, uh, seminal vesicle is the blue, uh, the yellow is Melly's gland, ah, which is, I don't know, it makes uh, a coating of the egg. Uh, of, uh, of, the egg, uh, of the egg. Let's see what else I forgot. Oral sucker, ventral sucker, all of this is uterus. Thank you. The brown in the model is uterus. We, whatever we have in you have here, uh, you have it on the slide too. Do we have a real slide? No. But anyhow, there is, uh, there is in your picture, you will not see this in the slides. Excretory pores, you will not see that. You see intestinal cecum, <coughs> you see the yolk glands or vetaline. Vitellaria, um, you will see ovary, um, seminal receptacles is blue, uh, bladder, you will not see anterior testes, all of this is testes right here. Loros canal, do not worry about it, sperm duct, do not worry about it, vetiline duct, some slides you see it, do not worry about it, vas deferens, do not worry about it, uh, seminal uh, vesicle, do not worry about it. Um, gonopore, do not worry about it. Excretory tube, do not worry about it. Pharyngeal muscles are, are called it. Um, uh, esophagus, pharynx, right here, this area, same thing. But most likely, everything on top, you should worry about it, except bladder, and well, do not worry about uh, testes. And everything on the bottom, you should not worry about. In the lab, again, in the lab, we go over it, on the review day. Okay, so those are the parts for that practical exam that you should. Next one is just the soma species. SP, it means there are three species that you should be familiar with. In the lab, if you see the slide or anything like that, you write down schistosoma, I'm happy. Okay, so the name of, the common name is blood fluke. So most of these flukes that we have in the lab, you guys, your, uh, we have specimen of them in the lab we have common name for them too. So this is called blood fluke. It's a blood-borne fluke. How about that? Blood-borne fluke. And you all know what I mean, blood-borne fluke. And I will talk about it. Old name is Bilharizia, as Bilharizia was the name, of, uh, the name of the person who discovered the life cycle. Said, ah, this is what's why people are having bloody feces or bloody urine. And I will talk about that. Male is bigger than female in the lab, look at it. And then, of course, a male has a canal called gynecophory canal. The way it is set up, 
uh, the male is like a hot dog bun. Think about it like this. The male is a hot dog. Y'all, how many of you eat hot dog? Yeah, we all eat hot dog. So you know that. The bun, the bread, and then the hot dog goes in there. So female is like hot dog, but the male is the hot dog bun. I hope I'm making some sense. And where the hot dog goes, my, on my analogy, is called gynecophoric canal. That little groove, if you would see it, that is the gynecophoric canal. And in the lab, you should be able to see it. Okay? So, let's go over three different species. Schistosoma S, I already mentioned it, right? So I can write down S. I'm following my own rules. S. Dot Mansoni. Schistosoma Mansoni is found in the veins of the large intestine and it's found in Africa, Brazil, West Indies, and many northern parts of South America. So that's the story of Schistosoma Mansoni. Schistosoma Japanicum in veins of the small intestine and the Far Eastern countries. Found in Far East. Okay. As the name appears, Japanicum, you might think Japan has problem but uh, Japanese were able to control this, again, by making outhouses, toilets, and then uh, they, uh, they, 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 they go educate farmers, and so on and so forth, they spend money on it, and they were able to control it. Schistosoma hematobium in veins of urinary bladder, and it's Africa and uh, Middle East. It's found in Africa and Middle East, okay? So there are no metacercarial or radio stage uh, in these parasites. The last one, a little bit of story, I sometimes ask this in the exam. So the other two, uh, Schistosoma mansoni and Schistosoma japanicum, the person has uh, bloody feces. And the adult parasites do not cause any problem. It's the eggs of these parasites in the lab. Look at it on the microscope. It's the eggs of these parasites that puncture uh, the veins of the small intestine and large intestine and urinary bladder, and they cause damage. So are the eggs very unusual based on what you've studied so far? It's the eggs that cause damage, pathological damage, right? You all know pathology means study of diseases. So, uh, interesting story about schistosoma hematobium in all the old days. It is in literature. I'm not making it up. You can go look up a parasitology book. Uh, it's in all the old days. What happened in, uh, in Africa, northern Africa, somewhere, uh, what happened uh, since females have their menstrual cycle, then you know they are old enough to have a family. In old days, they didn't know how to distinguish men are old enough to have a family. So they were waiting until they have bloody urine. When they had bloody urine, then they said, oh, that person is mature enough. Let's give him a wife, a, 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 a herd of sheep or goat, and let him go ha and have a happy life after. But now we know that it's not normal for men to have bloody urine. Okay, so that's what it calls schistosoma hematobium, caused bloody urine. Let's go over. Uh, of course, the eggs. The eggs are causing causing ulceration. Ulceration means uh, eroding away the uh, the epithelial cells. We study these. The epithelial cells. When the epithelial cells are eroding away by the eggs, then it causes the um, the uh, bleeding hemorrhage, if you would, of the, uh, of the what else? Uh, in the United States, we do not have any of these, okay? We do not have it, but we have swimmer's itch. And if you look at it, I uh, wrote down schistosoma. I did not underline it. Dermatitis, I wrote it capital D. Schistosoma dermatitis. Dermatitis is the name of skin inflammation of skin. What happens, I hope I have a picture, what happens in the United States, people who go to uh, lakes or ponds and swim, and when they come out, they have little nodules all over their body. Those nodules are the cercaria from birds' schistosoma. 
So birds, when they fly over a river or a pond or a lake, they poop in the water and they have this thing in the United States, there is a snail, it goes inside of the snail meristadium and comes out of the snail cercaria, but we human go into the body of water, the cercaria penetrate our skin. When the cercaria penetrate our skin, we are not the right host. We are the wrong host. So you have little inflammation, dermatitis, and it goes away in 24 hours. Okay, uh, but if it itches too much, if it bothers you, you do not want to live with it for 24 hours. You just get one percent hydrocortisone from a drugstore. It's on shelf. You put it on your skin. They all die, go away. Your itches go away. No big deal. Okay. After 24 hours, the cercaria died. Yes, your immune system will get rid of the cercaria within 24 hours. So there should be no problem. What else I have? What methods of biological control can you think of? Okay, let me go over the life cycle. Then I ask you what biological methods can you think of? Biological method, not chemical method. You know, right? When we have uh, weeds growing up in our garden, we use Roundup. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's a chemical method. I'm saying do not use Roundup or similar product to get rid of it. I'm saying what other method can you do. Here is a life cycle, interesting. So uh, here is human, inside of human, uh, it depends where in the body, uh, either small intestine, large intestine, or urinary bladder, the male and female, male and female, dioecious animal, so schistosoma is dioecious, clonorchus is monaceous, is that right? Those terms coming back to you, monaceous, dioecious. Clonorchus is monaceous. Uh, what else? Fasciola, hepatica, fasciolopsis, buski, all of those that we studied, they are monaceous. This is the first dioecious trematode we're studying. Right? This is a trematode. So male and female copulates wherever they are, schistosoma and they release their eggs. What we have in the lab is schistosoma manzoni. You can see the spike right here. And that's what scientists believe this is causing damage. Here, they do not have, the Japanicum does not have a huge spike. Um, so how does it cause damage? Again, we don't know it has a spike, but it's a small one. And then schistosoma hematobium spike is right here, or spine spike, and these are the cause of the damage. And out of, out of the egg comes uh, mericidia. Mericidia find the snail. Out of the snail, you have sporocyst and cercaria. Look at the cercaria. The tail is branched. What you saw in fasciola hepatica and clonorchus sinensis, it was straight. Here's a dead giveaway that this is schistosoma cercaria. And what happens? with schistosoma, cercaria, they penetrate into human skin. It's unlike the other one that you had to eat raw fish. You remember this? You had to eat raw fish, or you had to eat vegetation, liver, not these guys. These guys penetrate skin. Of course, you have to go to a body of water naked, right? Bare hand or foot. And I'll show you some picture, we'll talk about it. So when human goes to a body of water, naked, not naked, naked, they have pants, they have jacket, but all, all it takes, you put their hand in a rice field. People who get them, they go to the rice fields and with their hand, they're planting rice or removing rice from rice fields. They get it. I hope I'm making some sense. And in the same rice field, they defecate. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay, here's a nice life cycle, I think based on your textbook. Here's a male, female, and here's a gynecophoric canal. This is female. This is the male. This is the hot dog bun. This is the hot dog. They copulate and they release the egg. In the egg, uh, of course, you see his feet are blue, right? So, of course, he has crawled on. I'm not in here. But uh, his feet is blue, so the cercaria penetrate the skin and then the cercaria in goes in, the, they travel, they go into the small intestine or large intestine or urinary bladder, and what happens, they become male and female. Some of the cercaria become male, some of them become female. I hope I'm making some sense. 
Okay, the egg comes out. This is most likely just Solomon and Sony, right? And then the carrier comes out, goes to the snail, and from snail you have the sporocyst, and inside of sporocyst you have cercaria, cercaria going there and penetrate into human skin. Uh, adult male and female schistosoma and sony in copulation, life cycle of schistosoma. I hope I'm making some sense. A little bit. And then uh, what, uh, why these countries have problems because they do not make outhouses for people who go and defecate in that outhouse near the body of water where they have, they defecate right in that body of water. Okay, this is the this guy liver uh, shows schistosoma. Uh, liver shows uh, schistosoma hepatica fibrosis. The surface cut of liver shows um, schistosoma hepatica fibrosis. Okay, I'm not sure what he's talking about. But anyway, these are, it could be either uh, fasciola hepatica, this is the, probably made a mistake, fasciola hepatica. These are all fasciola hepatica. Um, what else? Schistosoma can cause dwarfism. They call it dwarfing. This is a 13-year-old boy. Okay, this is a 24-year-old boy. You might think they're the same person, but they are not the same person. Uh, that's in case of schistosoma hepaticum. He has a big belly, possibly due to schistosoma as well. Um, but um, maybe other problems. But he's a 13-year-old, uh, and he is a 24-year-old. Look at it, the same height and uh, same uh, body as uh, a 13 year old. So schistosoma can cause dwarfism, they call it dwarfism as well. World Health Organization a few years back, I don't know, I don't know what is the most recent update on, they uh, categorized six diseases on planet Earth that claims more lives than any other thing, okay? Those six diseases, you're familiar with most of them now. The one you're familiar with is schistosomiasis. You have just studied that today. Malaria, of course, you know that, caused by plasmodium. Uh, filariasis, come, I'll come back to this a little bit later, uh, next exam material. Trypanosomiasis, yes. Nishmaniasis, yes, and leprosy. Leprosy caused by bacteria, okay? So out of, out of the six diseases that the World Health Organization classified, they had major diseases on planet Earth, six out of six of them, five of them are parasites. And they, do, they did not, I still do not know in medical schools, uh, most of my research is before medical school. I should research medical schools, what happens in medical schools too. Uh, most of medical schools got rid of uh, parasitology, now it's coming back. Because what's happening on planet Earth, people are traveling all over. And the United States is not as homogeneous as it used to be. A lot of people come to US, stay, but they come and visit and they go back. So these parasites are constantly coming in, okay? Um, that's why they have to teach it in medical schools. Um, the medical students in the past, they had no clue what these parasites are. They had one lecture for one hour during their microbiology. Right now, some of you are taking microbiology. They do cover parasites in there, but not as detailed as we cover it here. So that's why at the beginning of semester, I asked you guys, raise your hand, what do you want to become? You want to become dentists, pharmacists, go to medical school. It is better to know parasites than you know about tigers and lions. We can study that stuff too, the vertebrate animals. Most of you want to go to medical school, pharmacy school, dental school. You better know these things. Okay? I think. But anyhow, after I retire, they probably hire somebody else, and that person says, nah, forget the invertebrates, forget diseases, forget parasites. We are going to go to lions and tigers and, and giraffes and talk about them. <laughs> Turtles, I don't know, I say lion giants, I'm talking about animals, but turtles, you know, amphibians, reptiles, they, they spend the entire semester on, on those animals. I think we should spend it on these. Okay, the next one, Paragonimus westermini, found in the United States. 
The other pairs are usually are not found in the United States, but let's talk about a few that is found in the United States. We do not have this in the lab. We do not have Paragonimus westermini in the lab. However, I would like you to know a few things about it, the pathology they cause. So uh, uh, the common name for it is long fruit. What, the, what happens, this um, adult this, uh, of this parasite is found eventually, I will go over the life cycle, they end up in the lungs. And if you have a parasite, most of the time, we talked about this so far, if there is a parasite in our body, think about it, they have to get out. If they want the life cycle to go on, they have to get out. How do they get out? Either through urine or feces or a mosquito comes, take a bite, remember, protozoa, take a bite from blood and give it to somebody else. Are you with me so far? But what if a parasite is in the lungs? How do eggs get out? Airborne. How? You, yeah, you cough in the sputum. So the eggs can come off as sputum, in the sputum, and some people are very polite, right here. Some people are polite. When we cough up and we have a sputum, we swallow it, <laughs> right? Don't, don't, yeah. don't say you don't laugh. I never do this, I mean, yeah, you're in a public place. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to do it in a bus. <laughs> right? You don't do it in a bus or you don't do it in a car with four other people are sitting down. So you just have a sputum and you swallow it. And when you swallow it, where does it end up? from your respiratory system ends up into your what? Digestive system. From your respiratory system, the eggs end up into digestive system. And from digestive system, the eggs end up into feces. So, these parasites, long flu, they can get out of their host two ways. One way is sputum. You are out by the lake or river so you have sputum, you put it in the water, excuse me. You put it in the water, right? And the life cycle will go on. Or you're in a bus, you're in a public place, you cannot put it out there. So you swallow it, and then you go, you get out of the bus, you go next to the river, and you defecate. That's in the river now. I hope I'll make or a pond or lake, whatever it is. Okay? So here, yeah, again, uh, you, we do not have the adult of this worm or the eggs or anything in the lab, so don't worry about it. 